Hello everyone and welcome to episode 4 of FTB Revelation. How are you doing today? How's life? So what is the plan for today? The plan for today is to start making a barn and start the automation of cake. Yes, we're going to have lots of cake. And I know what you're going to ask. You're going to ask Lush, you're lactose intolerant. If you eat a lot of cake, you'll be contributing to global warming. The answer to that is very simple. The cake is not for me. It's for the flowers. We are going to need a flat area in order to make a few structures and I was thinking this area is not that bad because our botania area which we are going to use the cakes will be just in front of it and if we want to expand it we can move this way and our base is just over there. So we need to remove all the trees and we need to flatten the area. I'll be right back. building we are going to need a lot of clay and I thought I'm going to use a clayconia from Botania in order to convert sand into clay. Uh, the problem is I don't know how to do that. Um, I know how to do that but we, you know temporarily. So if we make something like this and then we go up and up and up. I guess this is high enough. The problem is how do I get down? Uh oh. I guess we jump. I'm alive. Don't know why. This is actually fun. Look. This is the rough shape of our barn. It's not supposed to be anything magnificent. It's basically a barn and we put animals inside and that's it. <laughs> so I'm happy with the design. Uh, in order to make cake, we are going to need four ingredients. Eggs, wheat, milk and sugar. We can cheat everything. Basically by cheating I mean we can have everything ready on demand because we can use garden cloches for the sugar cane, we can use a rancher for the milk and wheat is easy, <laughs> easy peasy. The only thing that we cannot cheat is eggs. There are no cheaty ways of getting eggs. So we have to have actual chickens and I thought we just put them all here, put a vacuum hopper chain here, collect the eggs, I don't know, because that's our bottleneck. I actually spent too much time on this place, look, <laughs> I even replaced these blocks. So you can say, good job Lush, you paid attention to details. We have to get rid of this guy. Can we just break you? Probably not. This is really bad idea. Very bad idea. Very bad idea. We jump on top, we put a TNT and we ignite it and run away. Do you explode? Yeah, it worked. Or we could have just used a scoop. Needless to say, I'm not a fan of bees. I think we should be able to buy chickens, right? If they haven't disabled this. Uh, how does a chicken egg look like? Oh, okay, this one. So let's buy a few. Ten. Yeah, that should be more than enough. Apparently this is my new job. I have to breed chickens. It's been a while and we just had our first egg. And that's it. So we need a lot of chickens. Oh, we had a second egg. Okay, that's fine. I wanted to use the lamp of growth from Tomcraft, but apparently this lamp will have no effect if there is eight or more of a particular species already present. So I have to do this manually. That's always fun. I just discovered something by accident. So if you put sugarcane inside a sawmill, if you put eight of them, you will get two sugar which is not very efficient, but you will also get something called pulped biomass. And if you put it inside the magma crucible, you will get bio crude, which apparently it's like crude oil. And if you refine it, you will get gasoline, which is literally like refined fuel. So we can put it inside a compression dynamo or a combustion generator, and it will give us a lot of RF. So this could be a dual purpose farm. It will make us cake and biofuel, no, gasoline. It would have been much easier to just make a lens from astral sorcery and convert pumpkins into cakes. And everything would have been done in one block. Sadly, a genius thought that this is going to be much more fun. It turned out to be a logistical nightmare. <laughs> and I will explain to you why. First, let us go through this together. Here, we have the chickens. The chickens will lay eggs. It will go inside this vacuum hopper and they will also shed feathers. There is an option from Quark, which uh, if you enable it in the mods options, which is here, uh, they will also shed feathers once in a while. So everything goes inside this vacuum chest and the eggs go inside an ender chest. 
Over here we have 8 garden cloches, 6 of them for sugarcane and 2 of them for wheat. And we are powering them using thermoelectric generators from immersive engineering because we don't need that much RF because each garden cloche consumes only 8 RF per tick. That was a surprise to me as well. <laughs> anyway, I also have a sawmill here which converts a sugarcane into sugar and this biopulp thingy, pulp biomass. And then I do have a cow down here and he looks very happy. Don't judge him. <laughs> and uh, there is a rancher over there which milks him and puts the milk inside this sequential fabricator. Everything gets mixed, we get cake, goes on a conveyor belt and goes into this chest. That's how it works. And then we will give the cakes to our Keka Morrises and get a ton of mana. Amazing, right? Look at the size of this mana burst. Uh, compared to this one, the one which we had from End of Flames is like a mosquito farting. This is like a fart from a dragon. I forgot to mention this is not our final setup for Botania. As you know, we are going to make a Botania area across the river and this is just a temporary thing so that I will get a little bit of mana and I can fight the Guardian of Gaia. So for now, this is going to stay. So why is this a logistical nightmare for me? Well, first of all, we're getting eggs and feathers here, but we don't need the feathers. The feathers have to go inside our ME system and I need feathers, so we can't just void them here. And also here, we are getting extra seeds from the wheat and we don't need the seed. Uh, we can convert it into seed oil, but that's not very useful. <laughs> and uh, the distances here between the barn, these garden cloches and the cow thingy is not that much, but it's actually too much to just use item docks or I don't know, conveyor belts because they are neither practical practical nor look nice if you use them over these distances. So I had to come up with a system of ender chests and I'm using filters from thermal expansion in order to determine how much items should stay inside an ender chest. So we will not get more than two stacks of sugarcane or two stacks of wheat inside so that the ender chest does not get full. Then we have to get this pulp biomass out which is another story and we have to do it later on. Uh, I want to make a generator, I don't know, convert it, refine it and so on and so forth. Uh, I still have not managed to make it perfectly balanced because, um, well, eggs, we're not getting that much eggs, but we're getting more sugar than eggs. And you, you can see we're also getting a lot of wheat. So we need to balance it out. Otherwise, the ender chest will get full. And yeah, that, that's the logistical problem part. But so far, it's good. For some reason, I thought it would be a fun idea to have a small bakery next to our barn so that we can have a villager inside. We come to him when we want cake. I don't know how the mechanisms of that would work. If it doesn't, he'll be just there for decorations. But he will have his living quarters up here. And he also has a safe. And he will also sell us wine. Maybe later on, we add a windmill. Maybe outdoor sitting for, I don't know, a coffee shop so that we can have coffee and cake. <laughs> I don't know, but for now I'm tired from building, so let's do something else. I want to fight the Ender Dragon today, but I do not wish to have this fight without having creative flight. There is a Flugel Tiara from Botania which requires 4 Gaia Spirits and an Ender Air Bottle. So if we fight the Guardian of Gaia and get the Spirits, we can make the Ender Air Bottle in the end and we can just assemble the Tiara in the end and have the fight with the Ender Dragon. So our first task is to fight the Guardian of Gaia. And since we have Reliquary in the pack, it also makes sense to make a Witherless Rose before we fight the Guardian of Gaia, which requires four Nether Stars and four of these Pearls. I do not think we have enough. No, we have only three. Okay. We have a teeny tiny slime. I think we will keep this guy and keep looking. Yeah, this is a slime chunk, so I should just be nearby. I've been down there for the past 20 minutes and nothing has spawned. If they don't want to spawn, that's fine by me. We're going to force them to spawn. Let's give it like two buckets. That should be more than enough. And we put you inside and we get a slime. And the big one. Okay, I, I think that's enough. That's enough. If you are going into battle, you should wear armor. Don't go naked. Oh, 
Alright guys, I think we have everything we are going to need in order to have the Guardian of Gaia fight. We have 3 beacons over there which will give us speed, strength, resistance and regeneration. I also made some flasks from Botania for absorption, instant health and regeneration. I also made the miners too because that will keep our saturation topped off. And I am wearing the emerald armor. If this fight goes really bad, I might make the terrestrial armor. But it's the first tier so I don't think it's going to be that difficult. And maybe we should wait until morning. It is the next morning and we can start the fight. There are ways to cheese the fight, but I really like it. So I'm going to do that. Oh, okay. I think it should be fine now. Let's try. No. Why? It well, I hope this time there are no obstructions. Still? Come on. I think our problem was that this beacon had to be one block higher and this is why we managed to have the fight. Uh, I'm, I remember specifically that I always hated the pylons to be dangling in the air like this. So I always used to do it one block lower and I'm not sure, maybe there has been an update. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, we had one fight, we can have another. I'm carrying all the ingredients needed in order to make the tiara. I'm carrying also a crafting table, some ender pearls, some eyes of the ender, and I'm also carrying some empty bottles, some EFLNs, and some mob imprisonment tools. I also made a bow, and we have 1497 torches. So, where is the stronghold? That way. So, there is a crab leg from Quark, and if you cook it, that's... that's good food. It's much better than this one. Should we take him? You guys know that I have installed ice and fire and apparently the stronghold is in the middle of the ocean. I'm a fan of sea serpents apparently. I saw a sea serpent and he was not very friendly. He took away my boat so I had to dig underground. I found the cave system and apparently we are not that far from the stronghold itself. And I also found dilithium ore from Taiga and we can mine it. Problem is, I can see it on the map, but I can't find it. It's not down here. Up? No. I can literally hear the silver fish and according to the map we should be right on top. We are? How did you expect people to find this place? Even the entrance is closed. <laughs> okay. And we are ready to go. I hope. We have visited the end. And we have Draco... Oh, that's the void. Okay. We dig up. And we are up. Okay. It's good that there's nothing crazy around here. We need one bottle of Ender Air. And... Did we get it? Yes. And then we put you down. And try to make the tiara. Where's the tiara? Come on. I can't find it. Ah, oh, here. Cool. We have creative flight. I think I should spend a little bit of time on the main end island and try to gather some draconium. Then we will go to end cities and try to get a shulker. I'll be right back. Well, I managed to get a few pieces of draconium and a lot of end stone. Let's see what we will find in the end islands. Chorus fruit? Oh, end city. <laughs> okay, that's nice. Technically, we do not need an elytra, we just need one of you guys. And these guys. The pearls. You know, I just said that technically we don't need an elytra, but there is a ship over there. So, <laughs> why not? Hello. They 
take a lot of damage. Okay. Uh, what can we dump? Yep. All right, guys. It's been a while later, and I'm finally back from the end. Obviously, <laughs> I spent a little bit of time at our barn area in order to fix the problems which I had for providing resources for our sequential fabricator. Basically, my problem was that these ender chests would get full and I had no way of getting rid of the extra items that I had, like seeds and extra sugar. So what I did is basically just add a buffer in the form of a drawer and I added a void upgrade. And then I have an extra ender chest which takes the seeds and the feathers to our ME system. So right now we're producing cake without any problem, but I'm voiding it because uh, our mana battery is full. So yeah, I'm very efficient, I know. Anyhow, something that I just discovered by accident is that if you play with Tomcraft, you will know that making these scribing tools is a pain because they run out of ink and... Well, basically you have to make a new one and you know you have to get rid of the old one and it's too much work but i was reading lexica botania and apparently you can convert it into a botania version and then you can just recharge it with mana so let's try that just drop you in mana or no <laughs> does it have to be full maybe ah so it does have to be a brand new one okay how do we charge it? We just drop you in mana? I think. No. Actually, yeah. You just charge it like a mana tablet. And do you work? Or do you crash my game? No, you do work. Okay, that was good. In every mod pack that we play, we always do something. We make a mob farm. Not like that one, but a manual mob farm. And the purpose of that farm is not to gather loot. Well, it is to gather loot, but very specific loot from a very specific mob. Or maybe to upgrade your sword. And what am I doing? I have flight. <laughs> and maybe gather demonic will for blood magic. So let's make that manual mob farm maybe here. It's in our magical area, so it would make sense. This is basically the idea that I had in mind and it's very simple. So we do have a mob duplicator which will spawn the mobs that we want depending on which mob imprisonment tool we put inside. We do have an ender tank which is filled with essence and it's connected to our mob farm. And I do have a vacuum chest here which covers the entire area hopefully, yes. And I have painted it with hempcrete so it's not visible. And then we have item conduits here which will funnel the route to these chests. Also these barrier stones from Tomcraft are amazing. So. It's basically a fence, you can cross it, but mobs can't. So I can just stand here and kill them. It's gonna be fun. So don't mind connecting this thing into a redstone conduit so that we can hook it up to a switch and we can turn it on and off whenever we're outside the barrier and we don't have to come in to turn it off because otherwise they might be able to kill us. You work, right? No. So you are input on red and I have to make the wiring. So we set this one to output and on red. Yeah. Now it should work. So I just realized that the mob duplicator is the output, so it should be on red, and the lever is the input, and therefore it's on red. Now it should work. We put the zombies inside and we activate yeah. it. Do we get zombies? Yes. You see, they cannot cross. And I can hit them. And I can repair my tools. Anyway guys, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye bye.